Is midodrine indicated in cirrhotic patients with hypotension and hyponatremia? The answer is yes. One observational study showed long-term midodrine improved survival in patients with cirrhosis and refractory ascites and also showed an increase in sodium levels. However, a subsequent placebo-controlled trial did not show a survival benefit. Can portal hypertension by itself cause gastritis? The answer is yes. So this is called portal hypertensive gastropathy. It's thought to be related to hyperemia and increased congestion in the stomach. Interestingly, a PPI is not really indicated as acid doesn't really play a large role in bleeding from portal hypertensive gastropathy. Should ACEs and ARBs be discontinued in cirrhotic patients with ascites? The answer is yes. So once they start to develop that ascites, get them off the ACE and ARB because they're going to be at high risk for hepatorenal syndrome. And this is from the AASLD, which is the American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases. A cirrhotic patient requiring therapy paracentesis of greater than eight liters every two weeks suggests what problem? Usually this is dietary non-adherence. So this is per up-to-date, but if somebody's requiring that frequent of paracentesis, usually it's because they're not being adherent to their diet. Uh, of course, we want to optimize their diuretics as well to try and prevent the fluid reaccumulation, but this much amount of drainage and the frequency at which it needs to be drained usually suggests that there's a dietary component to it as well. What is an additional test you should send in ascites fluid? If the fluid is brown, this would be bilirubin and you should check if there's a bilirubin leak. And this can sometimes happen if there is a gallbladder or bowel perforation that can cause a biliary leak. You can also consider sending an amylase to check for pancreatitis or bowel perforation as well. Should you send ascites fluid cultures in blood culture bottles? I've started to do this more frequently, but it has been associated with increased yield of a positive uh, culture. So in patients with neutrophils greater than 250, so diagnostic for SBP, there was a 100% success in culturing an organism if it was sent in a blood culture bottle versus 76% in patients that had delayed inoculation. And so nowadays when I've been doing my paras, I've been sending them in blood culture bottles. And once you get used to doing it, it's not that much of an extra step to just put it in the blood culture bottle right away.